Valve is invading your living room and they are bringing two steam machines and this fancy steam controller with them. Steam machines are Valve's console competitor. Basically two years ago, Gabe Newell said, I don't like Windows 8, I don't really like consoles. Why don't we bring our vast library of PC titles into the living room? You can sit on couches, your butt can be comfortable and you can play on the TV with your friends. So right now we have two boxes. We have Alienware's actual steam machine, which is basically a full-fledged computer, except coming in at a retail price of uh, $400 to $700. It's a much smaller PC. It's maybe eight inches by eight inches by two inches instead of being a giant desktop tower. And then we also have Steam Link, which is Valve's own hardware. And that is a $50 box, um, but it's not an actual PC. It's more a streaming only machine. And that's really small. It's about three inches by three inches. It's basically the size of like a cable modem. The Steam controller is actually, I'd say, the most important thing the Valve has done here. Uh, rumor has it that they actually delayed the entire Steam Machine launch the whole year so that they could finish up on the controller. And that's probably a good thing because it's what makes the whole living room ecosystem work. So what's interesting about the Steam controller is all these buttons are remappable. So if you want the A button here to be the A button, that's fine. If you want it to be left mouse, also fine. If you want it to be any of the buttons on a keyboard, that's fine too. On top of that, you have these two grip buttons on the back, which add to your standard repertoire. Uh, and then you have these two haptic pads, which can also be remapped to a bunch of functions. So you can treat it like a trackpad. You can treat this one like a D-pad. That's kind of what they've built it for. One of the things Valve has done is go in and make a custom control scheme that uses the controller as a game pad, except for this right haptic pad, which they treat as the desktop mouse control. And that's really useful because you get the precision of a trackpad slash mouse for the camera movement, but then you have the game pad for everything else, which it feels like the way this was designed. It feels like that's the correct way to use this controller. The good thing about the Steam controller is it's only $50 and it's wireless, which I'm pretty sure makes it the cheapest of the wireless controllers. Uh, both the Xbox One controller and the DualShock 4 list for $60, uh, which is a little more expensive and with less functionality. Uh, and it's kind of hard to use. I'm not going to say it's really difficult to use, but it probably took me three or four days to get used to because the muscle memory that you've built up over, for me, 15, 20 years of you know dual analog stick controllers, uh, that doesn't work here anymore. You need to get used to using your thumbs on these weird trackpads. Uh, and so it does take a few days, but I think once you get used to it, you're going to find this is a very powerful controller. So the question becomes, you have this great controller and it's built for the living room, but what machine do you want to put in your living room? And for that, as I said, Steam has provided us with the Steam Link and Alienware Steam Machine. What I like about the Alienware Steam Machine is it's pretty small. It fits into my entertainment center. Uh, it's more powerful than a console, so you get anti-aliasing you get slightly better image quality. It runs 1080p, which you know, you're not gonna get on an Xbox One. Uh, on the other hand, you're paying for it. You're paying $800, which is more than you're ever gonna pay for a console. You have no upgradability really, and it's not as powerful as a full-size PC. This is not a 980 Ti machine. This is not something that you're gonna play all your games on ultra quality. This is a solidly mid-tier machine at a mid-tier price point. So I think that most people are gonna end up opting for Steam Link, which is much cheaper, like $50 and $50 for the controller and you can play games in your living room. That's very easy and it's very cheap and it's not a hard sell for most people. And on top of that, you're gonna get pretty good image quality if you have a good PC, but that's the problem. If your PC is shit, you're never gonna get good image quality out of the Steam Link. It's still gonna look exactly the same as it did the first time. It's gonna look the same way it does on your PC because it's running on your PC. Uh, which brings us to another point. This is not a new machine that you're getting. You're getting a streaming box, which means once you're running it, you can't use your PC in the other room. And on top of that, it's running over your network. So if your network is also shit, it's still not gonna work very well. Uh, if you have bad network quality, you're not gonna get crystal clear 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second out of Steam Link without a pretty good infrastructure in your house. I'm not really sure who I'd recommend Alienware Steam Machine to. It's a very nice piece of kit and it fits into my entertainment center well, but it's not a very powerful PC. So the only reason you really want it is if you really need that native performance in your living room. But I think most people, myself included, are gonna go with the Steam Link. It's cheap, it's only $50. And if like me, you're already running a very powerful machine in your office, you get that same performance without buying a second PC and putting it in your living room. Cool.